So what do you grow here? Corn, soybeans, wheat, and alfalfa. It's been, well, it's family farming. It's fourth generation, so. Yeah. Texas was dry last year, and it kind of moved up north this year, and everyone's been dry this year. A couple guys south of town here a couple miles caught a few ranks, and crops did a little better, but I work full-time for the power company, and then and you just dad's, this. And, yeah, this is, when you grow up and it's in your blood, it's kind of hard to get rid of. I don't yeah. know, I like it. I can't stand living in town, so. What kind of seed do you use? Corn and beans-wise, it's GMO, I mean, you pretty hard pressed to find some conventional numbers. There's a few coming around that do have it, but it's they're harder to find. I mean, everybody's you know with Monsanto and Syngenta and all them. Why? Those are the big players with Dupont Pioneer. So Mother Nature's always going to be right there with you. So it's just a matter of what these scientists can pull off to try to stay one step ahead. We better hurry up though, because they're. Not looking so good right now, but. We are letting the chemical companies uh, play God with our food supply. And this is the biggest guinea pig trial in human history, except it's all of us. Human beings are guinea pigs. What they're doing is they're taking a, a seed of maybe a soybean or a corn or an alfalfa, and they're splicing into that pesticidal bacteria, genes from flounders, genes from other bacteria and other plants, and creating a new species. And the results of that are unpredictable. What we see is that uh, the love affair we've had with genetic engineering because of the lobbyists and because of the successful sort of marketing effort has resulted in really an abandonment of traditional breeding methods. Uh, many of the classic uh, breeders out there say that they can no longer get research funding for traditional methods. That the only game in town is to work on uh, genetic engineering. So we've really put all of our eggs into this basket. But again, the problem is that in putting all of our eggs there, we're dealing with the unknown. In fact, this new um, genetically engineered sweet corn that Monsanto um, has produced and is now being sold at a Walmart near you um, contains not one, not two, but three different insecticides in every cell, in every kernel, um, three different insecticides, plus it has the Roundup Ready gene. So there are four genes um, that they put in that corn. Um, so we can put in multiple, multiple um, genes, um, but it got rolling with bacteria. Science is really about the free flow of information and uh, everyone uh, working uh, together. Part of the problem with uh, biotech uh, technology is you're creating these plants, which I think have questionable um, safety aspects, both the human and, and environmental. And then the other big problem has been the opportunity cost. Since all these land-grant universities and others were seeing that this was how they were going to make money is by doing genetic engineering and biotech and we'll be able to get these patents and make huge sums of uh, money, all this research money started to flow into biotechnology and away from agricultural ecology and some of these other basic disciplines which are really important for doing a truly sustainable agriculture. Yeah, because, you know, again, GMOs are based on the notion that you, uh, again, it's the maximum efficient production for short-term economic return, right? And on a short-term basis, it's obvious to anybody that's a farmer that it's worked, right? Uh, but it, you know, we're now starting to run up against the barriers of that because you haven't paid attention. You know, sustainability is not a part of that design, right? There's nothing in there but sustainability. There are virtually no benefits for the consumer in the technology. Um, there's nothing that makes the food more nutritious, more flavorful, better for us. Uh, there are few, if any, benefits uh, actually for the farmers. They pay a tremendous amount more for their seed. They have to sign proprietary 
technology agreements with Monsanto and Dow and other companies, and uh, they lose control of the way they're farming to some extent. We've seen an exponential increase in the rate of, of, of agrochemical applications. This after the same people who are trying to convince us that we don't want to know what's in our food sold this technology on the basis that it would reduce toxic chemical usage. So there aren't really benefits to the environment. There aren't economic benefits to the farmers. There aren't really any discernible benefits to human consumers. Who's benefiting from this? You know, risk assessment is a very important thing for people to understand. When FDA or EPA approves these different chemicals or genetically modified, they just look about what risk are there known today. And if there's not enough known risk, they'll allow the product to go in the marketplace. But that, in plain English, means we're all the guinea pigs until they find there's risk. And so basically all the chemicals that were used in the 50s when I was a little boy are all gone today because they found there was risk. That means that we used them for 20 years and then they concluded, well, I guess that's not as good as we thought. So risk assessment is the means of our regulation in this country. Nothing is declared safe. You hear people saying GMOs are safe or chemicals are safe. You'll never see the government declare safe. On their risk assessment basis, they've not seen enough risk to keep it off the market. That's all they say. Transgenic agriculture, when you strip away all of the propaganda and all of the false claims made by Monsanto, that transgenic agriculture or genetic engineering, it's all about control. It's taking control of the seed supply, which is tantamount to taking control of the world's food supply. And I don't believe that anyone or any corporation should have that kind of power. Um, in a democracy, it's dangerous when there's a concentration of power. And when you concentrate the ability of one corporation to have total control over the food supply through its seed, uh, that represents an, an absolute threat to the survival of our democracy and to the survival of this world. It's nothing short of a threat to our democracy.